Let's follow up on the proportional control example, but this time use MATLAB. Here again is the problem. We have a motor which we're modeling as a rotating mass. We want to control the output theta by using an input torque T. The system has a moment of inertia J10 with some viscous damping B theta dot where B is 0.5. The control specs state simply that we want the system to have a damping ratio of 0.7. This gives us a transfer function shown here and fill in the numbers and this is where we're at. Now I'm going to switch over to MATLAB and enter these values. In MATLAB we need to create a system. The system is defined as a transfer function with a numerator of 0.1 and a denominator of s squared plus 0.05s plus 0 times the constant term which gives us this transfer function. This corresponds to the transfer function for the motor model that we'll be using. Next, launch the SISO tools. That will bring you to this screen. Flip over to the configuration and system data. Our system looks like this. We want to create a feedback control system where the plant G, the proportional feedback gain, we call K. Here it's called C in MATLAB. And it's unity feedback, so H is 1, no feed forward, F is 1. If you need to review the control configuration, you should go back to the original notes on proportional control example. I'm going to enter the plant, and that was the system file that we defined. Next, let's set up the rest of our environment. Go to Graphical Tuning. We are currently only using the root locus, so we can turn off the photo plots right now. And we'll also be interested in a step response. So let's say that plot 1 is step, and now we need to decide where the step is. I'm going to flip back to the Architecture tab and then Control Architecture. Here is our system again, and it shows all the possible inputs and outputs. I'm interested in the step input where we input R, so that's going to be our theta input. We want to know what the corresponding output is, Y. So I want to step from R to Y. Analysis plots, R to Y. We need to now rearrange a window so you can get the root locus plot and the step response plot both showing. Here's the root locus plot. The open loop system has pole at zero and pole at 0 0.05. You should be able to verify that. The system has two poles, so it needs two zeros. It has no real zeros, so it has two zeros at infinity. And when there are two zeros at infinity, those occur at plus or minus on the imaginary axis. We don't know where they are along the real axis. We just know that they're up and down. Now we need to find the gains that give us the correct damping ratio. Well, we're somewhat restricted here, and this is what we expected. We know that the settling time is going to be fixed, and now we just need to find the corresponding gains along this line. To help me with this design, I'm going to turn on the grid. That was a right click. Select grid. This shows lines of constant damping and the circles, which are really elongated ellipses. Because of the scale factor, you can see the scale goes from 0 to 0 0.05 and then plus or minus 0.4. I want a damping ratio of 0.7. You can see that's not even showing up here. One way to handle that is just to change the scaling. So I'm going to right click, select properties, and then just force the scaling. Turn off the auto scale. I know that I want the real axis to be minus 0 0.05 to 0 and I'm going to put 0 0.07 to 0 0.07 and now you can see I can find a damping ratio of 0.7 here so I will click to move the gain and if you read down below on this window as I move you can see the damping ratio changes and just slide it till you get somewhere around 0.7 and the corresponding step response is shown here this is what we would expect for a step response of 0.7. A little bit of overshoot, and then it comes on in. But we still don't know what the gain is. So let's go back to the compensator window, look at the compensator editor, and here's the value for gain. C is 0 0.01. 
Now another way to do this would be manually put in the gain. I'm going to slide this over. Little's going to go off the screen a bit. I want you to see the root locus and the compensator editor here. I can change this manually. So if I change this to point 0.2, I'm hitting a tab. You can see it changes the gains. So I could pick the gains by moving the pink dots and sliding it or by manually putting in the values. One final step is to look at how much control effort is required. The step response here shows the output of the system for a step input. We can also look and see how much effort we have to put to make that happen. So I'm going to flip to the architecture and control architecture. You'll notice that there is a value u here. This is the controller input. This is what we have to put into the plant. So when we make our system with an amplifier, this is what's going to have to go into the motor. So we should also look at the input R to U. That is, when we put something in, what comes out of our compensator. I'll go back to the analysis plots, and I'm also going to look at R to U. Now oh, we've funny scaling here. I'm going to turn off the R to Y. So here is our R to U plot which shows that when we put a value in, we get this jump, and then it slowly tapers off. Once the system gets close to its final value, then there's no control effort required, which makes sense. The problem is this step right here. This means that we're going to have to have an instantaneous change in the controller output in order to make our system respond as we want, and that's not going to be possible. So what we need is a way to smooth this out. Now while we could do this analysis in the SISO tools, I'm going to flip over to Simulink, something a little more familiar, and, and show you how you, we can adjust this using Simulink. I've set up a Simulink model with the plant, the gain, and Unity feedback. Let's go to the scope, run the simulation, and it looks like nothing happened. Is that what's really going on? We expect a step response of one. The key here is to remember what the settling time for the system is. Remember, we have a pole at minus 0 0.025 plus or minus minus 0 0.025i, which means about 160 seconds. So we need to stretch this out. Back to Simulink, set the stop time to 200 seconds. Run the simulation again, and there we go. That's more what we'd expect. Let's put another scope so that we can look at the control effort. I'm holding down the control key and dragging, and we'll connect that scope here. Let's run this again and look at the control effort. You can see we have this step. Now the values are fairly small. We don't really know what the scale factor is here, so this could be significant, but the problem is this instantaneous jump, which we're not going to have an amplifier that can create that. So one solution is to smooth out the input. And here's an easy way to do that. Let's add a transfer function right here and put a low pass filter. Here is my system and I've put a low pass filter. A low pass filter is just a transfer function with a single pole. This is a simple low pass filter. And the important thing here is I've set the gain to one so that when s is equal to zero, it's 0.1 over 0.1. Let's look at the response here. This is the output from the filter. So the input is a step response. The output is this smooth step. This is what we'd expect. It removes the high frequency component. Now let's look at the control effort. You can see the control effort no longer has that jump at time is equal to zero. Instead, it's a smooth jump up, and then it continues on as it did originally. And the final thing to look at is the output. And you can see the output looks most the same as it did before. Now you can choose any filter you want here. To make this system work properly, what you want to do is choose a filter which is faster than the response of the system. My system has a settling time that corresponds to a pole at minus 0 0.025. I want to make this filter faster than that, so I should put the pole somewhere faster than minus 0 0.025. 0.1 is indeed faster, five times faster than the system, and so the response due to the addition of this filter on the step input doesn't change the actual output response, but it does affect the control effort.